Yeah, so uh, I'm William Max Nelson. Uh, I, several minutes ago, I, I found out I was the, the winner of the 2017 uh, Notting Hill Editions essay prize. Uh, and I was handed a book immediately, which is an amazing thing, uh, Five Ways of Being a Painting. Um, so my essays and other um, and the other finalist essays are published in this uh, edition. Uh, there's six essays, I believe. Uh, and it's it's a kind of extraordinary thing to... to <laughs> At the same moment that you're told you, you just won this extraordinary award, uh, to be handed the book as well and asked to do a reading from it is certainly an experience I've never had and I don't imagine I will, will ever have again. So it's, it's memorable. It's fantastic. It, it's one of the things that makes me sad that, that Tom Kramer passed away a few days ago and, and wasn't able to, to be with us here because I, I remember um, first finding these editions that were these kind of beautiful editions hardcover books of people, you know, essayists and writers that I loved and wondering, you know, who is this, what is this press, who is this person, people, I didn't know it was, uh, you know, a single individual kind of behind it um, that, that started this and, and uh, wondering what kind of, you know, a beautiful project this was. Um, and so it's amazing to be now a part of it and I, I am really sad that I, I didn't get to meet uh, Tom Kramer and, and get a chance to to, to talk with him, to you know, in, in some simple sense, I want to know like what got you to to engage in such a, a, a kind of quixotic venture. I mean, it is kind of uh, you know extraordinary, and you know, I, I understand he uh, found himself later in life kind of to be an essayist and and to to really um, kind of find himself in the form, and, and he became um, a lover of the not just the of the craft of it, but also, you know, himself uh, writing. Um, but I, I'm, there's still the, that kind of question of like what, what motivated him to start the, the press? Because it's, a, it's a, an act of generosity in, in a certain way. Um, independent presses are difficult ventures, I imagine. I, I've never been a part of one, but I, I know they're, they're f fighting against a, a, a big marketplace and, and a crazy environment that we live in with particular social media and all the kind of tools that one is supposed to employ and so I, I am really honored that they included me in the uh, in the in the volume and now the in their kind of books and I'm, I'm grateful that uh, to be a part of it. The, the writing of it was un unusual. I, I started it three years ago and wrote about the first half of it and had already gotten to the point of a lot of the characteristic features were there um, so I had, it was fragmented, kind of short sections uh, worked together into a, a, a whole, and I had images, I was already play with text and image, uh, but it, it remained too abstract and kind of conceptual. And uh, it was very different circumstances three years later uh, that I returned to it. Uh, I saw the essay prize uh, deadline was coming up, and I thought it was a good opportunity to to kind of take this out and to, to add to it, to rework it a little bit. I didn't know that I was going to, I wrote, I kind of more than doubled the length of it, added as many images, twice as many images. Um, I didn't know it was, I was going to add so much to it. Um, but I was really lucky that even though I was in difficult circumstances with, I was having to finish an academic book, my, my son was young and not sleeping well and the, the challenges of, of parenthood and, and being with a, a young, young child, um, but I was really lucky that I was writing extremely well uh, during the day when I was working on my academic book and I kind of thought I could try and take advantage of that, uh, the, the way that the words were coming in, you know, in some simple way. And uh, I tried to write one section, one fragment uh, per night. Um, instead of reading a little bit before I go to sleep, I decided to try and write one additional segment of it. and. Pretty much I was able to do that for a month every night and kind of have enough that I took a day and kind of worked it into uh, its kind of final form uh, and sent it off and, and, and you know, went back to focusing on the, the thinking about the things that were my everyday consuming priorities and my wife and my son and my, my book. And I was also teaching and doing administrative work at the time, so it was absolute madness. But uh, I'd gotten off and it was, it was great. And it was amazing because there were no stakes. It was just a prize competition. If I didn't win, there was no repercussions. There was no nothing. Uh, and uh, then I found out, I, on my wife's birthday, I found out that I was on the short list or the long list. 
and that was exciting. And then, you know, in stages, I found out obviously that I was on the short list, and then that meant to be coming to London and and, and here to find out it was, it was pretty uh, extraordinary. And I'm still um, still taking it in, <laughs> well, certainly since it was a couple of minutes ago. Yeah, I, I, I did end up finishing it on a, on, on a phone, which is uh, obviously quite strange, and particularly for a, a piece like this, it's not something you know you usually would be writing kind of longer, anything longer than maybe a text message uh, on a phone. Um, I still think it's not an ideal way to do it, but in the circumstances it was right. Uh, it allowed me, um, one, just to be, um, to fit it in to my schedule at the time, uh, and to, to not not even fully engage with the fact that I was writing something um, uh, big or serious. I, it was kind of a way to, to disconnect a little bit from the context around writing and just write uh, and just kind of allow me to, to focus on it almost like, you know, writing a note. Uh, and so, yeah, I was able to, to do it slowly. Uh, there's actually one of the one of the few benefits is that you know typing by thumb uh, it's rather slow and it does kind of allow for a considered a uh, slow writing uh, and so every night I would write one I would email it to myself because I was worried about losing things um, uh, and you know they just kind of snowballed one after the other and I was able to to do it and, and to, to fit it in and, um, and take a little time to edit them together and uh, you know, I wasn't even sure if I wanted to mention it was finished on the phone because I don't think that it, the, the, the form was already kind of determined before I had started that process and particularly the fragmented form. Um, but it was the, that form uh, probably made it easier to, to write on a, on a phone, right? I, I, I wasn't simply trying to add one little bit to a longer linear uh, narrative. It was, it allowed for writing short segments that could be juxtaposed and, and kind of structured and ordered in, in that kind of way. So yeah, it was a, a strange but fortuitous kind of situation. For me, the essay is very broad, and, and I wasn't, um, you know, the, the, the kind of classic idea of an argumentative essay uh, was something I never felt that I had to conform to. And some of my my favorite favorite writing, but my favorite essays are things that are sometimes not published as essays, not necessarily identified even as essays. Um, it includes a lot of things, but one of the ones that I find interesting that it's kind of on the outer reaches, and a lot of people might not usually think of it as essay, but it's sometimes the most moving kinds of essay are, are prose poems. Uh, sometimes, you know, there's quite long prose poems that have, um, that draw on some of the resources and the tools of poetry, um, but also are, are essays in a way, and they, they can really succeed sometimes in both um, kind of achieving a conceptual and emotional impact that, um, that, that I find quite moving. And I, I think was at the root of some of what I was doing. I was certainly reading a lot of um, poetry at the, at the time that, that, I was, um, that I was writing it, and particularly the, the, the beginning, uh, the first time when I was writing it. And, and um, yeah, it's, it's wonderful that the essay can be a, 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 quite, a quite broad thing and we don't have to police the strict boundaries. And, and you know, maybe even the attempt to define it is, is unnecessary. I kind of, I'm, I'm, I'm happy about that. You mentioned moving, being moved. Yeah. Uh, were you conscious at all of the fact that your wife was crying pretty much throughout your <laughs> reading at the end, through joy and pride, presumably? No, I was trying to uh, trying to hold it together and trying to focus on reading. Uh, so I, I'm used to. Um, being a professor, I'm used to lecturing, but I, certainly not uh, kind of giving any kind of reading or lecture in, in this kind of format where uh, I, I didn't know I was handed a book that uh, is amazing, but is, uh, you know, this format that I, I haven't seen before of, of my essay. Uh, and so just, I was just trying to be slow, <laughs> hold it together, and, um, and not rush myself uh, so that, you know, could create an actual experience of the, of the essay for, for other people, because I know it was just kind of flying by in my mind, but as long as I was uh, yeah, um, slow enough and focused enough with the words on the page that, um, that I, I was hoping it would work out. So yeah, work, looking at my wife would have been, a, a, or too much at least, it would have been a bad idea. I think I would have uh, yeah, had a hard time finishing the reading as well.